All right. Hello. Hello, <laughs> Hello again. <laughs> for the third time hopefully everybody can hear me and you especially um i'm so grateful to have shannon here shannon like just so open-heartedly is wanting to share about her experience your experience inside of school of love's inner circle so for anyone watching shannon is in the relationship group so we have two pods the women a, a pod for women who are single and women in relationships Shannon, can you tell us a little bit about what inspired you to actually like even get interested in School of Love and then and then eventually to join it? Well, so there were two big reasons why I was interested. One, as I looked at like the various dimensions that make up my life, I was really feeling like I felt super fulfilled in, in many of the dimensions of my life, but my relationship despite like truly loving my partner and there being lots of love there, I was feeling this like wish desire for, for further fulfillment and noticing over the last decade plus that we've been together, that we have a lot of patterns that kind of repeat themselves. And we've tried some things, but we needed some different ideas, I think. And so, so I was really curious to see if love coaching would be something that, that would be supportive. And I had, I know Diana um, from another experience that I was inside of and just really love sharing space with Diana. Um, the other piece of what was really inspiring me to work with Diana specifically, not just any old love coach or love, you know, counselor or anything was just wanting to further step into my own feminine goddess self and when I think of Diana that is who I think of you know she's fully embodying her goddess self and that really it just was really exciting to think that I might feel equally as embodied inside of my own sense of being a woman mm, I love that I love that so much and I always think oh my long wavy hair gives me a, a, a plus in this goddess vibe <laughs> It gives me an advantage. <laughs> well, your hair is beautiful. <laughs> it's just the essence of you, right? Like, I mean, we all have an essence of ourselves, but to feel fully, you know, intentional with the essence of which I am choosing to step into every day, you know, or, or from minute to minute, who is that version of me as a woman, not as you know, Shannon, the mom or Shannon, the coach or, you know, Shannon, the woman needed, <laughs> she needed something. Yeah. She's an amazing woman. Mm -hmm. What kind of hesitations? Cause I, I think, you know, it's really important to talk about some of the fears going into programs like this. Um, kind of hesitations did you have? And then even with those hesitations, what made you still take that leap? Um, I think the hesitation that I had was, would this, would this make a difference? Would, what's the guarantee? Yeah, totally. <laughs> Is there a warranty on this? <laughs> yeah, like what if it, what if it doesn't? Um, the what ifs, the, like, it's a big investment, but it's not really like it for the amount of access we get to you and to each other is so beautiful it's worth every single penny you know knowing i knew that that would be the case so it wasn't really a financial hesitation that i was giving it was really about like would this make a difference and you know i i spend a lot of time in reflection i do do the work inside of my life i do the work inside of myself and i guess when it comes to my relationship i was like well why why just me like why should i do this just this work and not you know us both um so I guess those were my big hesitations. And then your second question was what, what decided, what was it that made me decide to step in anyway? My soul's whisper, <laughs> my soul's whisper that, you know, I kept coming back to say, I'm still thinking about it. And, you know, just taking a leap because sometimes there isn't a guarantee that, that, you know, you're going to get to where you're going to want to go, but you're going somewhere. And it has made a difference for how I feel inside of myself. Yes. It's a really important point that you bring up about like, you know, so in this group, it's the women coming in who are in relationship to do the work. So there's this big conversation and this big question around 
why should I be the one doing the work? And I'm happy to give my point of view on that as well. I'd love to know, you know, four and a half months in, I think we're into the program. What would you say in response to someone who's watching and thinking, okay, that sounds great. We're going to talk about some of the shifts and things that have happened, but why should I do the work? Well, it's my relationship journey, right? Like I am in this relationship. And so, you know, especially for me, and I can't speak for everybody, but from my own experience, what, what has been really eye-opening is the, you know, whether I was in relationship with Dan or, or somebody else, like even inside of my relationships with my family members or friends, the same sort of fears will continue to come up, right? Like my big growing edge is, is around trust. And that stems from some, like my whole life, like I'm bringing all of these like little moments and, you know, my inner child really, you know, emerges often inside of my relationship with Dan. And so it's not Dan's job to heal my inner child, to heal my trust, to fill my trust bucket. That has to be something that I turn towards and then decide, am I ready to release this old story? Am I ready to, to try? <laughs> you know, am I ready to, to heal my own self, to, to trust that every day, every new day, every new experience is this opportunity for further healing when I know what it is that those wounds are. And I think that that's what's been so beautiful about the school of love is it's not just about, it's not just about choosing your desires and stepping into those. That's a huge part of the second half, but to really honor the journeys we've all been on and that we continue to be on. The reality is our partners are also on their own journeys. And so holding them whole inside of their own journey is such a beautiful shift. Um, I had told the women in our group that, you know, one of the ground rules that Diana has in School of Love is that we hold our partners whole. This isn't a place where we come and like partner bash. Like this isn't a place where we come and like complain about our partners. We can openly share about some an experience we've had that's triggered us or you know that we found difficult but it's not to blame our partners and I have found just being held to that um, expectation to be so beautiful and now I'm noticing in other circles of women how much of our dialogue is around you know blaming our partners you know sort of joking about their shortcomings it's not very it's not very nice. <laughs> and, and I think that it's, helpful. <laughs> no, it's not nice or helpful. And, and it's really lovely to actually step out of that sort of, I guess, pattern that we as women maybe have, as we talk about our partners amongst one another, you know, so that that in itself has been lovely to just even hold myself and be held to certain expectations that I do see my partner with love first. Yes, I love that. And I'll add my little piece to this too. You know, everything we do is we, we're bringing it back to the relationship, right? So partner is in one way or another being included in the experience and in the work. What I've seen is there, there are situations where it's clear, like the couple needs to come and do this together, right? Like, you know, you've done all your work on your own, the partner needs to come in, they need to do their work and, and, and there is power in doing it together. There's no question. My experience has been that there's even more power in coming in and noticing all of your own stuff in a space where your partner isn't there. So there can be like full honesty and full transparency and almost like a dropping of the ego because he isn't there. Mm -hmm. And we can, we can all as the group kind of hold you and see like, what is your piece in this? And without him there, it's kind of like allowing it to fully land. And then how do you now bring that shift into the relationship and watch, watch them reflect the changes you're making mm -hmm. and then actually be honest about the work that you're doing and say, this is what I'm working on. This is how you can help me. This is what I'm bringing. This is a conversation we need to have, right? So it's about like holding this space for you to really see yourself inside of the relationship, 
let whatever needs to go, go, and whatever needs to land, land, and then bring that to him. Make sense? Mm -hmm. For whoever's watching. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what would you say has been one of the most surprising things you've learned or one of the most surprising things in general, however you want to answer that about your experience in the inner circle? I think probably, probably just how deeply rooted inside of myself some of the patterns have been that I have like contributed to and um, kind of recognizing, recognizing the work that I need to do even further. That's probably been the most surprising, but um, yeah, I don't know if that answers your question. Yeah. So basically like the awareness around, oh, I have a part in the patterns we're in. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and this is how it's contributing. I love that. Would you say that's been kind of the biggest like light bulb moment or aha moment? Have there been others that you feel you'd want to share? <laughs> hmm. I'm still like, my mind is still sort of settling into just sort of the letting think the awareness land. Um, yeah. And I think this is, I mean, maybe not aha moments, like big aha moments. It's sort of like, for me, it feels as though there's like a very slow shift that's been happening that is almost imperceptible until I get to somewhere. Like I don't, I haven't quite yet gotten there, right? There's still two and a half months left. Mm -hmm. And I think that some of those bigger shifts I, I anticipate are still to come for me, mostly because there's been some major life circumstances that have <laughs> coincided with the time inside of the school of love, a couple of losses and a major move. So like just even having a home base to come back to, because as I have been you know, navigating these really difficult situations, Diana and the other women have been there to help reflect back to me what they're hearing inside of when, when I find my relationship stuff <laughs> to me coming up, right? Like, well, is this really about your relationship stuff? Or is this really about you needing to take care of your needs? Like, how can you meet your own needs right now? What is it that you're really desiring? If you were to just take a breath and go into your body and say, Ooh, what I need is space, what I need is sleep, you know, what I need is, is quiet, or to ask for time away from my kids so that I can process all of these major things going on. So just, again, it just comes back to the awareness that, that we ourselves do have responsibility inside of our relationships to take care of our own needs to to articulate clearly our desires ask for what it is that we we might need of our partners and not blame them for being human <laughs> you know 